we'll start her again. Sit down here with Dawn again. Uh, this is a, gonna be a short one. We said that last time. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like a hunt, right? Like, oh, I'll just go out for a short hunt. Oh God, I'll never. I, yeah, be a quick one. I'll be right back, honey. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. On day two, she has to come rescue me. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm stuck somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Mm. It takes a special woman to be a houndsman's wife, that's for sure. <laughs> Man, you ain't lying. I, I like it whenever they're like, you need to get these dogs out of here. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I did, I did have to, Shannon, when you have to beep that now? I, I, think I just didn't say it. Yeah. Yeah, that and that, uh, that brings us to the topic of discussion for this podcast, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that uh, you brought home another puppy. A puppy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so I get to babysit the puppy for yeah while you're working or whatever. I seen uh, oh it was I was on Facebook it was uh, you know Gun Dog Supply Steve Snell guy okay, yeah not a uh-huh. anyways I, I Facebook friends on him and I seen a little like the meme or whatever the internet yeah. thing that, or no it was a it was a screenshot of his text messages that his oh. wife says we're expecting um, a date. And it showed a picture of a, a thing that wouldn't load, you know, because cause Steve was out hunting. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know Steve, like, he, Steve's kind of like us, but he's a bird guy. He's always hunting. Mm-hmm. I like, that's why I like Steve. But it was just like the downloading sign. Yeah. <laughs> he's turn, like, turn. This, this better be a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. We're, I thought we were past that stage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, anyways. So, this is um, for some people. Again, we're trying to do some training talks, some some for the longest time at W, I was like, no, we're not talking dogs. We're not talking dogs, and I've just had to get over that. Like, hey, we're going to talk about different things of aspects of dogs, and there's a ton of different. You know, I I say this every time. Everybody's probably like, buddy, just shut up. We know different ways for different folks. We're just talking about one, but picking a puppy. We're going to talk about that topic a little bit. What are some things you want to look for? What are things that you you want to consider? Um, just. Mm-hmm. This was a topic that you uh, I, kind yeah, of came up on dinner last night. We were talking. Absolutely, I'm very I and and I'm really really. This is a topic I'm very passionate about. I think right. this is probably one of the most important topics of you know uh, moving into the, the field of sporting dog. No matter what, whether it's scent hounds or probably any any working dog, but um, I know scent hounds because that's what I've done for majority of my life so um so it, it's just extremely important and and it's not foolproof i wish it was um i wish it was more foolproof but it's not um and uh so it's just it's just a, a it's a, a, a important topic i think yeah i think a lot of i think probably some of you know i have you know little cliches that um i sh- you know i refer to and one of them is is you know, probably the best cat dog that was ever born, ever bred, probably died on the end of a chain, never caught a cat in its life. You really? Know? What do you mean I, by that? I just feel I mean, like... I know what you mean by it, but I yeah. want you to explain that to well, What I mean by that is that, you know, the person got a dog thinking it was going to be um, easy to do, and and uh, I'm just going to go out and catch cats with it, and none of the work was done, and they got discouraged and tied the dog up, and that's where it stayed. It never... Yeah never had the opportunities to become the dog that it could have become and, and died and a there. a different handler. And a different, different handler person. would have been a world beater and would have been the dog that all of us hounds, all of us, you, you know, their I would have been more than happy to pick a litter, a pick a puppy from. Right. Um, and yet that dog died on the end of the chain. We never got to see it, you know. So that's, I've always felt that way. And, um, and uh, the reason I felt that way, I feel that way is, of again back to that old Sally dog, um, two or three years old before I got her, never hunted, never was messed with. Um, she she was dying on the end of a chain every day, you know, getting right. closer. It was just and, somebody that had a dog tied out. Yep, and I got lucky and and got hold of the dog and, um, and uh, turned out to be to this day in thirty plus years of owning dogs, probably getting close. Yeah, thirty five years of having dogs, uh, still one of the best dogs. Um, I've ever owned. As far as cat dogs, taught me a lot. And and you you didn't go pick that dog up from a pup from the ground. Nope, nope. I just picked her up. And but she would have died on the end of a chain. And and here's here's where I screwed up with that dog too. Was um, this is when I really started taking a real stand against doing everything the old timer down the road says. Is right. 
um, I had a couple of guys say, ah, oh, just spay that dog, you know, this and that, you know, and, and I did, and I got no puppies after that. There's no going back. Really? Had I not listened to him, I could have got some puppies out of that and I would have increased my chance of having more Sally's and, oh, but I yeah. didn't, I listened to, I'm not saying don't listen to them old timers. I'm just saying that, um, uh, be your own houndsman. I'm going to say, I'm going to advocate for that. Yeah. You know, be your own houndsman, you know. At some point, you got to get off the interstate. Everybody's Absolutely. doing it this way, and you got to figure out what exit is yours. Absolutely. And make your own little road. Absolutely. And because you're feeding them, you know, yeah. you're, um, you may have a different style. And, and you know, the the technology is changing all the time every day and, and changing the sport. And, you know, some of the old timers get behind that. And they're not, uh, and not capitalizing on when If you have those tools, you can sure, surely. Uh, yeah increase your odds of making a good cat dog so who to get a pup from so i guess the well we're try and cover the who the what the when and how right? and how yeah <laughs> and um so uh i and, we're, and, and by who we're not going to give you a phone number to call no no because <laughs> that um chances are that it may not be the dog for you because yeah. it's that, got to, that chances are that, that that number's discontinued. I got yeah, to pay his bill. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, he's not going to answer. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, chances are you'll see you coming and take care of your retirement for him. But, yep. um, and I'm not, I don't mean that in a negative way. Uh, there are really good breeders out there doing a really good job and asking a fair price for their dog, yeah. um, for a puppy or even for a started dog for the work that goes into it. I absolutely, I absolutely believe that. Um, and, uh, so, so the who I think, um, would be, I would, you know, look at folks from your area, especially if you're just starting out, if you got a pack of dogs, you can throw a dog in from anywhere and try it out. I've done it. I love doing it. I enjoy that. Um, another local hunter I've mentioned in the other, uh, in another, po- other podcast, um, he may kick me in the tail for mentioning his name, but Robin Powell's another guy that has imported a lot of dogs into this area and tried them, spent a lot of money doing it not afraid and i've always looked up to the guy for that right I, you know I, I, he's he's um he he's the guy to put his money where his mouth is and tried it and he's a good handler so yeah. um so um anyways uh and he'd done things his own way so i've always i've always looked up to robin haven't hunted with him ever but talked to him and know that he He's a successful. Sometimes man. you just pick up things that exactly. you don't have to go out with them. No, nope. you can just tell a guy. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, when there's 15 guys calling it a dog, chances are it's a dog. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, um, so, anyways, um, uh, first, I I would look at uh, for for dogs from your local area, from folks that are successful. Um, and again, all of this is to increase the probability that you're going to be successful. It's right. not foolproof. Um, so uh, again, you gotta remember, we're just increasing the probability that you, you'll be successful or that the dog will be successful. So, um, picking a dog from, uh, an, the area that you are from is, and, and that, um, is successful at the target game that you intend to hunt. You can get a good dog. You can get a bear dog to catch cats and a cat dog to catch bears. Um, but chances are to probably be better at one than the other. They're typically not the same dog, but um, there are rare dogs that are really good at both. Right. I'm definitely not saying that's not true, but um, but uh, and I would I would say um, if you have a mentor, a group that you hunt with that's kind of taking you under their wing, you probably should lean on them a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely, especially if you enjoy going with them. Yeah, yeah. If you enjoy hunting with them and and you f- you enjoy their company, you're fulfilled with the hunt. You're satisfied with how your hunts are ending, and um, you're having a great time. Absolutely, yeah. that's where you want to go. And, and for a couple of reasons, one is of course they they've got dogs from your region that are doing the yep. target game that you want to hunt. The other thing is is that some of those guys, some guys, um, are get kind of breed specific, and um, so. If, if all those guys you're hunting with are hunting walker dogs and you show up with a uh, uh, black and tan, they may uh, they may not call you to go hunting with them they, as often. Yeah, or they may not give you credit for your dog. Whatever Absolutely. Your dog, yeah. If your dog does a little better, they, it might. Right. It, yeah. It just Ab- may, there's there may always be that, some, too. There's always I your mean, dog doing better and they shun your dog. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's just. Um, 
so if you enjoy hunting with them and that's a part of the hunt that you really enjoy is the social side of it um i encourage you to get dogs from those same guys and um yeah and i would i would like i am not a follower by any means like i i i don't i always wanted to go my beat my own drum and and so i'm not saying if it were me i'm not saying you have to toe the line and I wouldn't do that that way, but I would, especially starting out, yeah, you know, to to make those relationships and get to those invites yeah. to go hunting. If yeah, if that part of the hunt is important to you, yeah. the social side of it, um, going against the grain probably isn't the wisest choice, right? Um, but if you're one of those guys that you you see things your own way, then and and um, going out on your own and being out on your own is yep. really important to you. Doing this on your own is important to you. Then absolutely. Um, uh, again, you still want to look at those dogs if yep. they're being successful because absolutely. those are the, those dogs. Just do. realize that you're taking a different road and it's probably going to be a little tougher. Like honestly, absolutely. if you're going out with somebody successful and you can throw a pup in and get it some, some, um, in some opportunities. Yep. That there's, there's that, a lot to be said. That starts that. to help. Uh, that starts to help dull the edge of the knife that you've <laughs> yeah. been dancing in, in while you're training your own dog without the help of others yeah. so, or buying another dog. It definitely helps dull that edge. So the region, the mentor, those are things you want to consider. Is, Absolutely. In, As in, important. That's probably yeah. the number one. Um, and, and they may have a dog that they like, or, you know I mean? That, that if, if, and when I say that with, the, I think Alice Jason mentioned or whatever, but if a mentor has, you know, like they like walker dogs, they might try and find, help you find a good dog Absolutely. that they like, that they can't. And so that when they're hunting with it, whether it's their dog or not, they kind of have a little bit of ownership of it, which sure. could be healthy. I mean, it could be not healthy too, I guess unhealthy, right. but I think that kind of helps yeah, buy they, in a little bit. They may have, they may have a desire to hunt um, a dog from another breed or from another pack, um, but not have the room yeah and be like man try to get this dog and 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 uh we, I've, I've always wanted to try one get that and let's try that yeah, you know and so exactly. you kind of try it together and it and that kind of brings a another aspect of the hunt um uh to the table and picking a dog but um you know I, it, it's it's uh so 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 now you know the address you know so to speak yep. now what you know mm-hmm. um so you show up, and I've heard a lot of strategies. Of course, we can go back to the to the old days of you know picking the the pick of the litter, and how the pick of the litter came about was explain. Uh, that. I, yeah, I, think I know where you're going to. Yeah. The, so it, how do how the old days? Like, so back in the day, the, and, the uh, strategy. My lawyers probably should. I should make a little disclaimer. Yeah, disclaimer here. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is not what we're recommending. No. You do, okay. No. You you would <laughs> you would probably raise the eyebrow, law enforcement, and a lot of others, but. Um, but the old strategy was, uh, that you let the mother pick the pick of the litter, the pick, of the, and that's how the dog, how the, the name pick of the litter came. That sounds so cute. Um, was <laughs> mama gets to pick. Um, that's, a, that's, so, awesome. that's adorable dog. Yes, now, isn't it? Now how, how would I go about doing that in the old days? Doesn't this sound beautiful? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, go get yourself a bale of straw <laughs> and, uh, put it in a circle, you know, a big circle. Um, maybe you need some, exce- uh, some kind of accelerant. Um, put all the puppies in the middle of the, of the straw, straw. circle. Yeah. Straw circle on the ground. So you on get the a big old straw circle on the ground. Separate mom the from puppies. them. Separate mom from them. Um, and light the straw on fire and whatever <laughs> pup she saves, um, first, uh, that's the pick of the litter. That's how it came about. And that's how they used to pick the strongest, healthiest dog or pup out of the litter. That's how they made mama pick. That's how they made it happen. Oh. And, and uh, it's, it's kind of a barbaric way of doing it. Um, I definitely wouldn't recommend it, but apparently it worked because look how far we evolved. And I dogs. imagine it's just a, a little bit of... Sure. Know, it's, yeah. probably for, for... it's probably not going to singe the hair off the dog <laughs> as she jumped through, but yeah. um, just enough to create panic. And you may not... I, I mean, maybe they didn't... Maybe that was an exaggeration. You know how stories evolve. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they put it near a fire. Yeah. And never was in a ring of fire or whatever. But the, um, but the, the story was is that they made mom have to choose yep, one the, to save. Yep. And and she would go in there and pick a pup, and, and that was pick of the litter. It wasn't up to us. We did not decide. We did not have a choice yeah. in the matter. Um, so uh, and that 
was absolute unbiased by human. And it, we, uh, there is something to be said with that. In absolutely. our experience, with we've had some dogs with um, kidney or, or whatever kidney like, failure, ranger yeah. dog, mm -hmm. and and one hundred percent, I had mom excluded it. Mom would, oh, uh, he'd come home, and this pup would be in my closet. Mm -hmm. And yep. I mean, it just looked like another pup. I mean, to, to us, we couldn't tell. Mm -hmm. You really couldn't. There was no rhyme or reason why mm -hmm. this one pup was was in the in the closet. Yeah. And I mean, Laura would get so mad, like, "What are you doing, Copper? Get it back, put it back in there." And she, you know, you come out and there'd be a, a nest of them, and that one pup would be sitting out by itself. And, yeah. And uh, we ended up keeping that pup because it was like the runt, or you know, I mean, it yeah. was just the you got attached to it. We, yeah. Ex exactly. Yep. Laura yep. was really attached to yep. saving this pup. Yeah. And uh, committed. Yeah. I don't know. Was it four months, five months? You know, blood work done. And uh, kidney failure. I mean, just. Yep. yep. But, Wasn't that puppy's name Birdie? Uh, Birdie. And then that ranger. was what. That's one you got from me. Was Birdie. Yeah. And a ranger was yep. another one. Yep. And it was the same deal. She was excluded. Both them pups were excluded from, from nursing and and the litter by the mother. She and 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 unbeknownst to us, we wouldn't yep. have. You wouldn't look at them and go, "That puppy's sick." They looked all the same to me. Mm -hmm. um, but somehow she knew and. And she told us, and we did not follow the cue. And, yeah. Um, she, that wouldn't have been the pick out of the fire. No. <laughs> she would have chopped no. it off in the fire. Oh, no. I lowered that. That's a bad yeah. joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, for that, whatever reason, she wanted those puppies dead. Like, yeah. Like, not, it wasn't like she killed it herself, but she no. was like, yep, they're going to go off somewhere where she couldn't hear them. And if it was in the wild, if that was a, if that was a coyote it or a wolf have made or it overnight. whatever. Yeah. Exactly. It was, it was isolated. Like, yeah. I don't want to listen to this puppy cry. And this puppy's going to die. That's, yep. that's what the dog was doing yep. she was to us. And, and we overrode that yep. and forced her to care yep. for the puppy, to let the puppy feed, to do yep. all the things. And, and, the, and four or five months later, it didn't matter. It was, nope. it was like we just, we just prolonged it for four or five months. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and so there's, there is a lot to be said. But you, go, you show up and there's a, and mama's excluding a puppy. I wouldn't pick that one. Yeah. That's definitely not the one I would pick. Although, you know, it's our, our some of our nature yes. um, as I get it older very much and, is. and especially you take your children um, or take your wife um, who are just naturally more nurturing than males typically, um, you know, they, they might pick that pup or encourage you to pick that pup or you may go home with two puppies, you know, yeah. um, and, uh, and the end result still be four months later the thing suffered and died you know? yeah it, it was it was so so that might that, that that too should be another uh you know th uh, piece of the discussion is who you take with you when you pick a pup yeah you know um do you take the wife do you take the family do you um and i think that probably depends on how what you want w what you want and how involved your wife and children are in your hound dogging hound activity you're hunting yeah if they accompany you a lot absolutely i would encourage you to take them with you yeah if they don't participate if they you know if they wouldn't walk across the street to go hunting with you then then you know um yeah they're cute puppies and the kids like to see them but if they're not engaged involved in i i i wouldn't take them to, yeah i wouldn't i'd go pick my puppy by myself and uh but you when you as a family are committed to um to this the activity of hounding um you want it all in because, yeah yeah and i think that kind of touches on the style you know like we were talking earlier like family no family um the type of hunter it comes from is he a, a hunter that hunts really six days a week yep is he a weekend hunter? these are some of the questions yeah you know absolutely. so this is the style of pup that you're you know who you're getting it style from. of dog that this style is going to become yeah yeah um because they're so, just laying there and they're easy. So let's keep on the family thing. So, yep. so you, yep. So next, the, so the, in my situation, you know, my kids are actively in, in those dogs are part of our our household. Um, uh, neighbor kids are coming over. You know what I mean? Like they're just. I want. I. I'm. I got no tolerance for a. A, a dog that's a little ill. Ill. Yep. You know. Mm -hmm. um, Might bite. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. So when you visit that home, those that's a question you want to you know, ask the, the owner and make observations. If there's kit bicycles around and, you know, tricycles and kiddie pool and a swing and 
dog tracks all over the place, you're probably pretty safe. That, yep. that, that those dogs are probably going to be just fine around your and, and be an, an enjoyable companion around the house. Yeah. Um, but I would ask too. I would ask how are the how are the parents around children and um, uh, families and yeah. housebreaking. You know, if you're if you're intend to um, to have your dog live in the home as a companion. Um, you know, there's been years and years and years of us breeding these dogs and housebreaking has not been a part of it. Right. We, we, uh, kennel them or tether them. And, um, if, uh, it could, by, by just virtue of not selecting dogs that are easily housebroke, you may, um, you know, have, <laughs> yeah, you're kind of interjecting two different, st- you know, we're at this style where, you know, you go to somebody who their dogs are outside in kennels and they hunt six days a week you know what i mean like that may not be the family dog that you're going to go hunting a couple uh, once or twice a month or, or whatever. absolutely and that that's that's the that's definitely the next question is for that breeder is uh that handler how often do you hunt right and uh if they hunt if they're you know retired semi-retired and they hunt five days a week or six days a week or uh or more um you know and your opportunities are every other weekend um i be very careful there be very cautious um yeah. and uh, cuz you may um wind up with a dog that if you are not giving it attention if it's not being um interacted with very regularly exercise choose siding off your house i mean I, and that is not an exaggeration i have seen it yeah um and uh um you know and then then of course there's where do you live what's your environment are you living in a neighborhood um barking barking absolutely you can create you know uh it's it, it's a negative towards hounds um yeah, that uh you I know mean, your wife every, everything yeah. starts to go negative because you picked yeah you know, you, you you got on the internet and was like oh this dog's gonna hold up and it's gonna hunt six days a week and it's like you you may think well, that's what you want and it, well right it, well what what you get focused on i think is is um is Man, look at all the pictures of the cats this guy's yeah, got. Yeah, look at go. uh, everywhere I talk to this guy, they all say that you know uh, this breed or this guy is catching a pile of game. Yeah, but he's hunting six days a week, seven days a week, uh-huh. and you want to be very cautious about that. I'm not saying you can't pick them, um, but I am saying that you want to be very cautious, and uh, you you can wind up with a dog that is way more uh, very difficult to handle, and very difficult to train when you're only uh your only opportunities are four days a, a month uh yeah you know because the dog has a lot of energy the dog is not in the learning curve you know because it's just so excited and so wound up it's 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 not in the learning curve it's not in that state of mind it's just um oh my gosh i'm ready to roll yeah. run and it's they're tough to break when they're like that they're just tough to handle they're, you know you just um and and again, you you know you may give the wife or the family a, a negative uh, uh, outlook on hounds or your neighbors, yeah. you know, and that that kind of reflects on all of us, you know. Oh, that guy is you know barking hounds, you know, and barking hounds, and hounds get such a bad name for barking when they don't bark any more than the Labrador up on the hill or over the next block over. It's just that um, it's really easy to identify a hound, long ears and how they sound. Yeah. So it's just really easy for him to come. Oh, it's that guy because it's those. Yeah, he's got those. He's got the, all those dogs with the long ears. <laughs> yep, long yeah, long ears. So, and that's not saying don't. That's not saying do. Absolutely. It's just saying if 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 you're, and it doesn't mean go get a call. You know, what I mean, like we're, no. we're not saying that. Um, you know, oh, you can't. You don't want to get the bed. We're just saying that that guy that's hunting that much has got those dogs knocked down. Yep. They're hunted down. Some of those dogs don't do good until they're hunted down for three days. Right. You know what I mean? So you take that dog out on day one and day two, it's too crazy. I mean, it's, it's just wild. not, yeah. it, it's, it's passing track or not, not making turns or whatever. But on day three, that's when that dog starts to shine. Yep. And somebody that can get into that day three, day four, day five, and then keep them in that routine, that that's the prime for that dog. Absolutely. And, and there are guys percentage wise that hunt. Uh, that have their opportunities are four days a, a, a month. They hunt weekends or six or eight, whatever. Um, and percentage wise, they catch a lot of cats. Yeah. I mean, don't, 
I mean, absolutely, just because a guy hunts seven days a week doesn't necessarily mean he has a better program than right. the guy that's hunting eight days a week. You look at the percentages of the times that they catch. I mean, um, and, and there's, there's some to be said about uh, um, those opportunists that have, again, that have eight days. They eight don't. Days. They, what do you mean? You're losing me eight days. Eight days a week or eight days a month to hunt. Okay, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> like, um, damn, Don. So I, I used to think seven was good. Now eight is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, eight days a month. Eight couple days, days a, a weekends. Yeah, weekend opportunist. Yeah, hunter. And uh, um, I try. I don't use the um, weekend warrior thing. I think that has a negative uh, condensation to it. I, I, it's opportunity. I think the guys that. Um, work full time and they have opportunities to hunt weekends deserve a lot of credit. I mean, because yeah. they're working 40, 50 hours a week and then spending their weekend out there with the dogs, man. That absolutely. Hats and a off dog to you. that, and, and that's, and that's the situation where that's going to be you, a dog that wears down a little bit faster might actually be better. Absolutely. Like, Trains easier. Um, you know, typically, um, breaks easier typically. Um, and here, the other positive I think to that is, is that the guy that has, you know, seven days a week, uh, opportunity to hunt. It's raining today. I'm staying home. Yeah. It's blowing today. I'm staying home. Uh -huh. It's snowing. I'm staying home. That, that, uh, weekend opportunist person, it don't matter what the weather is. They're going hunting. He's going hunting and he's catching cats in all those conditions. Mm -hmm. That guy you want to look at. Yeah. You definitely want to look at him. Um, yeah. I mean, in, in the, in the cat season, maybe he's not catching the numbers that the guy hunting seven days a week is and he don't have maybe he don't even have the reputation um yeah. as that guy but um he's hunting the opportunities regardless of conditions and he's catching cats even if i am the guy hunting seven days a week i'm going to look at his dogs right. i'm going to take the time to look at his dogs because he's catching those cats in all those conditions he you know he's not high grading days he's not high grading cats he's not high grading ground that he, guy is he's just going absolutely deserves the yeah. respect. And and I think sometimes that gets overlooked absolutely. a lot because everybody looks and goes, oh, this guy's hunting. Um, and so it's easy to, to box in things and be like, oh, that guy hunts so much. He's got the best dog. You know, like, and he got dogs that fit him. I mean, otherwise he, uh, he's, he, you're hunting six days a week. You're not messing around with, with, with dogs that don't work. Right. I'll just tell you that right now. Right. Um, but they also are looking for different qualities in dogs mm -hmm. that hold up more. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, so the build, the feet, the stamina, you mm -hmm. know, there's some things like that, that they're looking at that would probably be detrimental to a guy that didn't hunt enough. Like that Absolutely. dog could, you know, putting that dog in a situation where it's not getting hunted is you're just, you're just not putting it in the right opportunity. That dog needs right. to be. Right. You, you know, right. You take the, the, the dog from, um, the, the pup and, you know, raise it in your, a pack of seven day a weekers and his feet blow every other it's i mean yeah. that he just didn't have the feet in him or he's you know he could have been a really damn nice dog yep but he just doesn't hunt good on th day three and day four yeah right but he's, man but you don't need day three you know if you're right. the guy that don't need day three and day four there's some damn nice dogs out there that, absolutely that absolutely you know, not so. saying that he, that that dog won't strive in that pack right and then vice versa not yep. you know you can't take you you could take a pup from from that seven day um a weaker and then put him in the weekenders kennel and and he do fine too yep, yep. but you could put him in there and he overruns tracks a lot he you know he's wild at the tree yeah. he's you know i can't keep him off my damn pickup on the rig you know he jumps around all the time and there's just no absolutes i guess right what, what the end of the, the at the end of the thing is is don't don't box everything into no. absolute like right this is what i need and because there's so many things on that don't so, do it but do it yeah in other words don't do it but do know you can increase your the likelihood of success if you're picking the right pups from the right breeders um and 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 then too um you know the, there are guys out there that are starting dogs now um and doing a really good job of that um and uh don't i mean i i know some guys that historically haven't have not been much as far as uh six, have not had much success in catching bobcats um get dogs from some of these breeders who are starting dogs and all of a sudden they're catching cats so yeah um there's a lot to be said about that and 
starting dogs is not for everyone. Right. Um, sometimes you're, it's in your best interest to hire a trainer, yeah. take a dog somewhere to some, to that seven day, or if he's, you know, a trainer that, uh, trains dogs, um, that's re- a really good option too for, for folks. It's hard to train to start out. Um, uh, when your opportunities are four days a month. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Like the curve, the learning curve, you know, when to get the pup. And again, sometimes you don't have much choice. You right. Know, like, right. Like, like it. I, I don't think there's a magic number, but I prefer, I prefer uh, 12 to 16 weeks. And the reason is, is I want them absolute um, uh, socialization by mom. I want her to absolutely um, have them weaned. Um, absolutely teaching them to stay away from her when she's tired. Um, you know, when she don't want the puppies around, um, I, I want them to, uh, to absolutely understand that when mom growls at you, that, uh, that's a consequence. Right. Under, um, cause then when I growl at you, um, that's a consequence. Yeah. And so it just, it just helps me, I think helps uh, as far as socialization, any dog growls at you or any dog is. So you want to be with the mom for as, as long as. as yeah. And not past probably 16 weeks. And this, cause then I, I want that. I want to be a part of that learning curve yeah. too. I want yeah. to be part of that, but I don't want to be completely past that. Um, and I think they start moving on, you know, 18 weeks and that, but, um, but again, in saying that, I don't want to discredit the guys that, you know, uh, that are training pups up to six months, eight months or whatever. And, um, cause those guys probably, th- there are a few guys in the country, only a few that I can think of that I know of that are successful at that. Um, and, uh, um, you know, they're doing a good job of it. I mean, right. the dogs are coming out social. They're, um, um, not all of them, of course, but the, I think probably the majority of them, they're just really good at what they're doing. And, and, uh, um, so, but they're not turning loose of a dog a lot of times under six months, you yeah. know? Um, and, uh, I think that's a really good strategy, but again, if you pick your pup and, um, I, I think looking at good handler to help you get started is, is a good strategy also. Um, but those guys are, those guys are far and few between and, um, and so what, when, when if, if you were to. And again, you don't have much control, but what time of year would you want to get your pup? Well, I, I like my pups to be, um, between seven and 10 or 11 months when I can start expecting snow. Um, I really like to have that. I I just feel like snow gives me a huge advantage and to give, to put the dog, it's my responsibility to give the dog all the opportunities I can. Um, and so that puts them at that time, if I'm doing my, uh, groundbreaking and if I'm doing my, my part, they're ready around, you know, seven, 10 months to start their own tracks. Uh, right. and when I, when I, when we get the first snow, even if I have a pack of good dogs, um, uh, I'll leave my good dogs at home for the first few snows and just put, just take my puppy yeah. and put them out there and let them fail and let them succeed and, I don't let them fail too many times in a row if I have the ability to put another dog with them and help them succeed because um, I feel like um, if they're running game and they're not catching, there's no end game that um, because they want to catch. The dogs I like that I look for, they have a desire to catch. And um, if they're not catching and getting that reward um, and, and that reward being me, um, being excited and petting them up and, and giving them that positive enforcement. Um, if they're not getting that, I think that, um, in some ways you can discourage a dog a little bit. I, I mean, I, and I, I've feel that way a little bit. And I think there's some old timers maybe put that in me. I don't know. Um, cause I, I've, I've hunted with some guys that, um, uh, if a young dog takes a deer, a deer, they just let them run it. They ain't going to catch it, especially if they're young, you know, right. They're going to run all over the freaking mountainside and you just go on hunting. And I've done it. I've done it many times. And I know that you, um, not you so much, but I've, I've hunted with uh, another fellow that uh, it just drove him nuts that I would do that. I would just let the dog go and come back nine times out of 10. If it's, if I pick my pup, right. Nine times out of 10, the thing, thing, thing finds me, it shows up. It's like, ah, 
and it's tired (laughs) you know but we still go hunting it's still it's still expected to hunt and um so there's some natural consequences to running that off game and and so um if if i pick my pup right you know they kind of so who who uh i guess how how would you go about finding the who like like you know what i mean like internet of course is really a good good source of information good and bad absolutely absolutely um, you can, you can portray, portray a lot of good on, uh, social media and not share the bad, which, you know, is kind of the deal. Yeah. Um, but go with them. Absolutely. You know, ask for, uh, opportunities and be thankful, be grateful. Also, um, uh, knowing to shut your mouth too, when you're hunting with, yeah, with folks. I think that's a big, um, you know, no one to just observe and, and say that, you know, I've just, you know, just observe and, um, and, and, but, but, but be grateful to, um, everybody's proud of your, your pup, your dog, when, especially if you have one or whatever. And that's a real, I mean, what you just said is, is easy to say it's difficult to do. You know yeah. what I mean? It really is. Um, and it takes a, a, a bit of self awareness to, to realize that some of those old timers, they may not, um, I, I, I get this, it, it, I'll just use, I'll use an example, but I'll be trying to explain something and somebody cut me off and be like, well, but this is why I did that. And like, okay, well then, then go do that. You know what I mean? I was just right, telling absolutely. you what, what, why that's not going to work. But if, if you think that's going to work, why, why am I here? You know what I mean? Why are you asking? It's one of the, yeah, exactly. Like you, you don't need me go do that. And then am I going to pay for this? You know, and then I'm going to pay for you to do it twice, but I'm okay paying twice because I want you to learn something. And so sometimes, and I guess that, that what I'm saying there is, is if you have somebody that does things a certain way, that doesn't mean it's the right way, but it means it's the way that they do it and it works for them. And you're, don't expect them to try to explain to you why you should do that. You know what I mean? If you're going to, well, right. but this dog does that, or but, but, but this, that's why this doesn't work for, but, but, you know, if you have the butt syndrome, that's like, yeah, that, that won't work for mine. It may be true. I'm not saying it's not. But that guy, you may shut that guy up before he even gives you his advice. The root of exactly. what he was trying to tell you. And, you know, I, I always, and you've heard me, I've told you this. I've told you and, and your wife this mm-hmm. and hurt your feelings. I've seen it. Everything after butt is bullshit. Yeah. And, yep. um, and so, um, yeah, it, it, it was just what's the what's the intent that's what we're going for right we don't need butts yeah you know and if if you're gonna um and i again i you know i'm a real advocate again for be your own houndsman um if if you have a way that you want to try it absolutely try it yeah absolutely but um, don't expect exactly don't the the, yeah. the mentor to, to, to you're not going to teach him anything yeah exactly especially you know <laughs> he maybe maybe if he's he being way, successful he, he'll he's, look at it and go well, what happened there what, you know but there's not many of the there's a few of the guys that are like that mm-hmm. um but yeah. if you show up and he's hunting all the same dogs same color dogs out of the same strain of dogs he's got his program and yeah he's probably not interested in learning why would he he's right. he's doing what he likes to do and i had a guy uh he probably don't listen to podcasts so i'll talk about um oh it's some court course uh, i don't know some dogo or some kind of dog it's mm-hmm. like the world beater dog and he was trying to tell me how it would do good for cats and uh i, I was like maybe maybe it would he said, well, you should take one. I'll give you a pup on no charge or whatever. You know, these are, these are $2,500 dogs. And I'm like, no, here's the deal. I, I don't, my time's more worth more to me than to experiment. Like, I know what I want to do. That's not part of my program. And that's yeah. your deal. If yeah. you want to come and go, like, I'll let you go with me once or twice and, and, and get you, you know, let you try one. Absolutely. I'm not going to turn my dogs loose with you. But, um. I want to see this. Yeah, Absolutely. I, I, I'm, I'd like to see your experiment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They don't want. They just want to hand you the the dog right. and be like, yeah, but but this dog would do that. And like, uh, here's what I think I would have. You know, I, mean, I just say, here's what I think is going to happen. It's like, no, oh, these dogs are cold nose and they just they're smart as a whip and you know, and it's like, yeah, but I don't want to try that. So have a good day. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and that's kind of that's they, a little bit of an exaggeration. Be, but and, and that's just kind of a um, example of uh, perception. Uh-huh. Um, 
Yeah, this thing's cold nose. It'll smell a two-day-old cow track. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't I can think smell you, that son of a yeah, bitch too. <laughs> I don't think you're getting what I'm putting down here. Yeah. You know, um, but uh, so, uh, anyways, that's a, a, a bigger thing. But, yeah. But on the micro scale, you could be doing that, like you said. If you got a guy that's that's got these, you know, he's he's all their. I don't quit picking on the Walker guys, but they're all plots. You know, I mean, you, you just pick whatever, and it's yep. like that's their deal. Mm-hmm. You're not going to show up there, for the most part, with blue tick, and and have them go, man, I've been doing it wrong my whole life. Right, right. Unless you, I mean, there, uh, um, I guess there were there were times that, um, in my in my experience where I was like, mm, yeah, I was definitely doing that wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I and uh, yeah, and uh, or, you know, I could definitely do that different. Um, and uh. Um, so, so but, there are opportunities. But rarely, yeah, from a new guy. So from a new guy. We're talking with yeah. a pup. What we're talking about is when you're taking your pup out to a mentor. Try to limit the the excuses. You're not gonna, yeah, try not to teach him anything. Go yeah. out there and remember what the goal is. Yeah, exactly. the goal is is to is to um, if you're looking for a puppy, and that's you know what we're t- talking about. If you're looking for a prospect. Then pay attention to his dogs. Listen yeah. to the man. Listen, uh, listen to his what his environment is like. You know, does he have children at home? If you have children at home, those yep. are the type of things you want to talk about. Is he hunting? You know, seven days a week. Um, you want to talk about those things. Um, when you get out of uh, uh, and 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 then even even in in a smaller scale, if there's a particular dog out of that pack that you related to, that you made a connection with, that you felt like, man, I really like that Annie dog. Yep. Man, she. Um, you know, whatever she, came, was she did. Yeah, something about her. She, maybe she had to come over and ask for a bite of your sandwich. You know, yeah. I don't know. I mean, sometimes they're just these. You just get these connections with dogs, and I think that's really important. Yeah. Um, and you go, you know, hey, uh, uh, Joe, uh, you're gonna. I'd really like a puppy out of Annie. You know, when, if you're ever gonna breed Annie, I'd really like a pup out of that. Um, and, and he I, would and, know the history of Annie, so where it comes from, and all that yeah. come out of so and so stuff. And he's hunting Annie for a reason. Yeah, if he's if exactly. you're hunting with the right guy, and you're at the right address. Mm-hmm. He's he has Annie for a reason. Yeah. Um. And and that's happened to me personally. And um. The you know with the you know I got it dealt an unfortunate card, um, in my life right now. But um, the only hound I have on the place, um, picked pick me. I was camped with the um with zip and um uh the the i liked the uh, the only dog out of his pack that i really had a connection with was the mother of of the dog that i only the only hound i have on the place right um i gave i gave zip my word when he gave me the puppy that um that the dog would die here right and She's 15 now. And, uh, <laughs> I come over here and I'm like, oh, crap. Yeah. She's still alive? Is still around. Of course she is, buddy. Of course she is. <laughs> we were know? joking. We were like, you should have hunted her one or two more years. She just knocked a little bit more out yeah, of her. Yeah, she did a little, a little more out of her. But, um, but And that, too, is, is, is important to keep your word. Yeah. If you pick a pup from, from uh, a litter, and even if you buy the pup and... Uh, and I've done this several, I always do this. This is etiquette, in my opinion. And some people have a different definition of etiquette, but in my opinion, etiquette is, if I choose to get rid of that dog for whatever reason, I call the breeder first. Yeah. First dibs. If I'm going to give that dog away, I'm going to give it back to him. I don't care if I paid him $5,000 for that puppy. Right. If I'm getting rid of that dog, he gets first dibs at it. If I, if I, if, if I think the dog has value, it's just not fitting into my litter or to my pack. Um. It, but it, you know, uh, I, you know that's very difficult. Um, I've had some that I go, you know, this this dog has had a lot of experience. It's it, here. Here's here's a good example. Um, so I I bought two puppies from a, a breeder at the same time. Um, they were almost identical mm-hmm. in ability. Why would I have two of them the same age with the same ability? Right. At about two years old. So I decided to sell one, and I called the breeder first, and. I, you know, I, I wanted twenty five hundred dollars for this particular dog. Um, I call a breeder. Hey, you know, uh, you know, I got this dog from you. They're, they're the same. They're both nice dogs. Um, uh, for two thousand dollars, I'll sell it back to you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell the dog for twenty five hundred. Right. Um, but I'm gonna give you a little discount on the dog because you bred the dog up, and and uh, if you could use the dog, I want you to have it. Yeah. If I'm gonna give the dog away, or um, if it's um, 
I, you know, it's, it depends on the value. Like I said, if you're giving a dog yeah. away because of value to a person, you're a, yeah, a weird, young person. You, you, you know, I, I could see where you could, you could give it to somebody where you're not really, you're not giving, you're just not selling. You're selling a dog, but you're just not taking money. Right. That would be a little different. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if you're, if you're like, hey, I'm, um, this dog needs to go somewhere else. Yeah, that's a good, good way of putting. It. I'm selling a dog, but I'm not getting any money. That's a yeah. good way of putting it. Because it. like, um. If you got a kid or something's like, hey, this is what you need. And there's people out there that will give a, not, there's a lot of people who will give a, a cold dog away. Yeah. Go, well, I'm not talking about that. I'm not right. trying to, you know, because that does happen and there's plenty of that. You get old, the old dog that's I've not pa- got life. I've paid to give a dog away and, and a dog that I did not feel had, uh, had what it took to become, it was a cull. Um, and what I mean by paid to get rid of, I'd go down and have the dog spayed or neutered and then give yeah. the dog away. The dog ain't going to, if it's a somebody's pet, pet what whatever. difference does it make? Yeah. Uh, doesn't make no difference to the breeding because uh um the dog was a nice dog, it was super social. Um and it was it had the temperament that I felt that yeah. it would enjoy a life with um with a family. I'll have it spayed or neutered and give it away yeah. to them. But I think what you're talking about is is if you take a pup from somebody and it's not your cup of tea. Like right. you, you want out of the pup. Yeah. This is not um bit off more than I can chew, yeah. whatever. Or it's just exactly. not fitting into the rest of my dogs. Yeah. You know? Um I, so I, I believe that proper etiquette is is the breeder gets first choice at getting the dog back. If you're gonna give it away, give it back to him. And uh um I really try that. And given your word, you know, like uh ding ding, this ding dog I got here, um, you know, I gave Zip my word that uh you know, that dog will die here. Right. And uh she's still here. Um, and, uh, in a time in my life where I really don't, I don't have time for dogs, but she's my house dog. She's yeah. a pet and, um, and all that, it's, but she was a good hound. She was a nice, solid hound. I mean, uh, um, so, you know, I don't regret keeping her other than, um, she gets me up four or five times a night to go potty. <laughs> <laughs> just like everything else in your life right now, right. Just, yeah, but, something else. Yeah. But anyway, keep being honest with the, the breeders. Like I say, it's important, I think. And. Um, and that can go both ways because there's definitely egos that probably would, yeah. you know, I, I've always been cautious. I've had people offer me dogs and I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to take a dog from you because I'm, I'm nervous about their ego and I don't tell them this, but, right. um, I want to get a dog from somebody who, if it doesn't work out for me, okay, no hard feelings. I didn't like, hurt their feelings. I, right. You can have the dog back. I don't care. You know, right. like, I will give you the dog back. Right. I just don't want to hold this dog. I want to be able to call you and be like, "Hey, yeah, this dog doesn't fit my pack. Like it, it, yeah, it's, it's not, not right working. for me." Yeah. Um, I yeah. want somebody who, who their ego is not going to be. Um, yeah, in the way. In the way. Right, and yeah, and that goes, of course, both ways. I've seen, I've seen dogs not get a chance because, um, they, you know, the I got this pup from so and so, and, um, he don't have good dogs. It, right. Know, right. Better and, my dogs. Yeah. The other person say, "Oh, you shouldn't have never got that pup." That yep. pup. and then you start losing that. You losing faith in the dog, yep. and and uh, you know you start. You know it's it's tough, but um, you know more importantly, I think again is just um, you get that address. The where um, timing when is when if you can keep, if you if you have vacation time. You, you, and this is another good point too. I think it's. Um, you don't want that dog in its sharpest learning curve as far as game, you know, that seven to, you know, 11, 12 months um, for cats. I know it's different for different game, but uh, right during, um, in my opinion, the hottest part of the summer or during deer and elk season, because you, I mean, you're stuck at home. And if you're going to run a piece of off game, it's going to be with that dog. Do that in the middle of deer season if you want to see some really pissed off deer hunters. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, you know, or elk hunters, you know, you, uh, th- th- there's more reasons than just snow that I like timing, you know, yeah, you to have be to right. yourself and you, a little bit, a little yeah. more flexibility. When, when's your vacation time? You yeah. know, if you have vacation two weeks coming up, why not, uh, why not time that to the age of your puppy? Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I think that's really, really important. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I think that's, uh, um, means we can't use rings of fire anymore. I think that's probably your best strategies. <laughs> we should just try that one time. I see. Oh, uh, yeah. Burn. Yeah. 
put it on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube, <laughs> Facebook, yeah. You know, all that. Like, yeah. I think that would go over really well. Yeah, yeah. If you want three hots and a cot for a while. Yeah. <laughs> So. All right. So when you're when you're picking your pup, when when like there's just things to just stop and think. It's easy to get enamored with. This guy catches so many cats. He's got the best dogs. That is not always. I mean, he does have good dogs. I'm not saying he doesn't. But you, we don't have to chase the the six day a week guy all the time. And it's something to to look at. But you really want to think about what your program is going to be your kids, how you're going to handle the dog. Are you going to be hunting the same way that guy is? And it's not saying that you may not want to get a pup out of his stuff. I'm not saying that at all. But you just want to be methodical about where you get a pup. At least I am really methodical about. Yeah, it's a commitment. It's a huge commitment to, you know, your family, your pack, your, uh, and, man, just don't overcommit. You yeah. know? For me, my, when a dog gets to, to the, to the Woodbury household, the culling process is like a government agency. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like there's a union. There's yeah. children, you know, there's, a, there's a process. I'm oh, not saying that when you have women and children, they have the whole family involved. <laughs> the, the, there's the a lot more to is, look at than it's hunting ability. Exactly. There's yeah. a union, and yeah. I'm not saying that I can't make that union happen. Like I, I yeah. everybody knows that I make the final call, and and I try to. Tell them as soon as I can when I think there's a dog that's not going to make it. I'm like, look, here's the deal. I may have to, and I'll start the tears early. Yeah, but um, let the grieving begin. Um, but I I will say that they probably have more opportunity for me because of the union. It's like I said, it's like, yeah, I can't yeah. just go fire them. I just, right. and, and somebody might you, be able to. You, you know, pick your battles. Like, you you pick your battles. And, and it's uncomfortable. It's not fun to put your family through that i mean let's you got something wrong with you that you know it's not fun and yeah and so that that puts you on a heightened um uh, uh um i don't know how you put it but when i select a pup it I'm needs to the... have a decent upper chance you yeah know i mean like i i want to look at it and go i'm just not going to the days of just going to the nickel ads and just grabbing a pup for me or no no that's not going to happen i right. want to know who it's coming from and i want to know the dogs well i'll say this I want you or somebody else that I trust to know the dog because I don't know the dogs well enough to do that. But um, that's why I was asking you last night. It's like, hey, this is what I'm thinking. And I start poking around and I start asking people questions because, you know, I want to find out and I want to know that when that pup comes in, the background behind the pup is there. And right. so that I have. I've increased my probability that this is going to be successful. I've And I've decreased the probability I'm going to have to have a union meeting. <laughs> <laughs> the union meetings are no good. Yeah. So, they yeah. They can invite, vote me out of the tribe. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And that's, and that's and, and, you know, one more thing real quick, too. Yeah. Um, uh, number of puppies. Oh, um, real really quick, good. Um, is. Um, litter mates. Yeah, litter mates. Um, I've seen a lot of, I've experienced a lot of squabbles between litter mates as they grow up. Um, same sex litter mates primarily. It seems like if you get a female and a male, you don't seem to have that as much. Two females, you find there's some squabbles. But um, what I typically do is I'll, if I, if there's an opportunity, um, if I have room to pick, to take two puppies, I like to take two pip puppies and then pick my favorite later on. Call the breeder. You want this one back? I'll make yep. a good deal on it. I mean, I mean, I'll even sell it back to him for what I paid for it, um, and he can resell it or do whatever he wants with right. it. Um, because, uh, um, or I'll, you know, I'll, I'll give it away to somebody else that I hunt with or around or yeah. whatever. I pick my kind of pick my favorite. I really like that strategy if, if I have the room to do it. Why? Um, I like that because uh, kind of where I live, the puppies get to play together. They get to um, entertain, oh, you a yeah, bit, entertain huh? each other when especially when I was working full time. Um, but, um, uh, and you know, they, I've seen them be competitive to a fault and I've seen them be competitive to where it's like, awesome. This is what I like. I mean, yeah. these two are really pushing for the, for that position. And, um, and so I, re I just really like that. Um, and, uh, so it, it, again, that's not, it, but it's a lot of work. It's it, a lot of work. Um, and there's a lot, there's some risk with that. Absolutely. With, absolutely. With, uh, yeah. the, 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 the hierarchy. Yep. You know, uh, fight. 
yep. you know, the, as a dominance, I yep. guess is the word I'm going to use. We, Absolutely. We had that. And again, that, and I think that's definitely true. Same sex litter mates. Yeah. Um, but uh, um, if you don't have a pack of dogs, I probably would discourage. And when I start back up, I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to start with one. You think they just play each other, play too much yeah, out there? I, um, I want to focus on that one. Yeah. I want to give 100% of my attention to that one. Um, and, but there's some risk with that too. I could, I could be eight, 10 months into it and that dog not make it. Yeah. And I can start again from oh, scratch. Again. Um, yeah. Two, like I said, the other reason I could think of is you go out for a hike in the woods and the, the dogs, you, you got to make sure they know when to turn it on for hunting. When yeah. it's like, Hey, we're working and when we're not yeah. and with two of them, not saying you can't. Right. But it, it definitely, um, definitely that, um, that switch from, um, I've got my collar on it's work time. Dad does no tolerance for nonsense right now. Yeah. Um, is more difficult because of the distractions, yep. you know, of two puppies, but, and it's harder for you to give that message, you know? Um, and, uh, um, so I, if, if you're just starting out, I think one puppy's, especially if you're not an experienced houndsman yeah. and you're just starting out one puppy is, uh, and you're for the reality of it is, uh, one puppy, um, and, uh, it's probably going to fail. Um, you're probably going to fail at it. Um, first time you got to yeah. have your heart in it. You got to have passion for this. Um, again, you went, you went with Joe down the road and caught three cats three days in a row. Yeah. Um, and it made it look easy. Um, I promise you, <laughs> um, I <laughs> promise you he had some hardship to get there. Yeah. And, uh, um, and, and I, and yeah. I, and two, if you go, like I said, if you go with two, you're just amplifying problems Absolutely. and making the success harder. So even if you do, let's say you catch one, <clears throat> let's say you catch a cat. Now you got one dog at the tree, one dog running off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now you split your, you know what I mean? It's just little things like that. Sometimes Absolutely. you just don't realize, yep. but, but when you should be down at that tree, rewarding that one, you're you chasing got this other the other dog one. running on down the road <laughs> right. and you're like, you're worried about this one. And so you end up chasing the bad dog. Yeah. It gets the attention. Bad dog, but no. you know what I mean? The, the dog that's not doing right. Yeah. You're, it fell out. It ran on a deer. It whatever. Yeah. You're reinforcing bad behavior because your time goes towards. Yeah. You know, it kind of comes down to absolutely. Um, you know, and it's little things like that that you don't think about. Right. But right. But that's what you just focus because you have to. You know. Yeah. Like right. I, you, the dog goes back on the track and it's up by the pickup. And you know they're hauling logs on that road. I had a woof. I had a, a. I mean, this season I had a dog, ran there and ended up having one bait up whatever caught one with three dogs one dog slipped off and it was running it was on a cat i have no doubts just looking at the track or whatever but um the guy i was with was really nervous about the one dog and i'm like i was like that dog's safe it's not going anywhere i'm gonna focus on this because this is the cat i started with and that dog should be here you know and i just mentally focused i was like i'll deal with that dog later you know what i mean because number one you know i, I want to be here and and so sometimes it's just harder to do and and you can't, you know what I mean? Like if you're you're running bears, whatever, it's on a road. Like you got to go pick that dog Absolutely. up. Like there's no rhyme or reason. But that's the situation where it it just causes these little micro problems that, that you, take away from the dog that's doing good. And you may not even realize it. Yeah. You may get home and be like, man, I don't know what happened. And it's like, well, it's because you spent your day on this dog rather than that dog. Yeah. And and so yeah. Uh, getting getting to definitely has its challenges. Um, that's for sure. Even, yeah. even in a pack of dogs, you know, um, it's just, if, if you've got the time and if you've got the room, um, absolutely you can do it. Yeah. And, but it is a lot more work. And I know guys that I've heard this, I, if I haven't heard it a hundred times, it's been a thousand. I'm going to keep the whole litter. I'm going to hunt the whole litter. Yeah. And you get back with them in a year and you ask them how that worked out for them. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that go? And, <laughs> About week four, we're like, I'm yeah. done. The whole and, litter's well, gone. You make right. me an offer. <laughs> Three days later, you see, you run into, you know, another hunter and, and uh, he's got a pup. Me, where'd you get that? Oh, I got it from old Joe. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought that would probably happen. You know, yeah. it, it's really tough to be that dedicated. There are guys doing it. Um, um, and, uh, again, hats off to them for that. Uh, it's just not my style um, yeah. of way of doing it. I would never, I, I've had in my life of like, say 30 plus years of doing this. Um, I've had two litters of puppies on my, on my property. 
and uh, I wouldn't have had the second litter if I didn't give my word to the breeder that I would allow him to breed that dog to his choice um, later down the road. I would have never had that second litter. I'm glad I did. I got a couple of nice, real nice dogs out of it. Is that uh, uh, blue ticks? Blue ticks, yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, and uh, I got well, I got one really nice dog out of it. And you got a nice dog out of yeah. that, that litter. Kind of a nice dog. And <laughs> got her fault. So. <laughs> yes. So do we all. But um, <laughs> so um, so I'm not a breeder, um, but. Um, you know, so I go pick my puppy, you know, I yeah. go pick my puppy. And, and when I have three good dogs, I have, th you know, um, then I go looking for my gambler dog and, yeah. um, so you play around a little bit. Right. I play around. I do. I, you know, cause I've always looked up to Robin for, um, for stretching out and getting dogs from, you know, different parts of the country and trying them. So I do that. I try yeah. that cause I've always looked up to him for that. And, uh, um, I enjoy that challenge and, and it makes me, um, it encourages me to be more dynamic as far as my training, how I train dogs. And uh, so I, I, that's what I like, you know. Um, cool. That's what I do. So. Well, half hour turn, is, as always. A yeah. Short little, All right. little well, short little race and we got distracted. But that no, was good Good talking. Yes, got a couple likewise. podcasts here, Don. We need to do this more often. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. I, uh, I need to get down here. I know. With the COVID deal, you know, OUSDA hasn't been going there. Right. Uh, I was telling you, like, I need to get Zip and Jerry and some of these old timers. Yeah. Um, around the Oregon area, just yeah. just because that's where from this region where absolutely. I'm from. So yeah. you know, I I want to do it in other states too, but I just know these guys here, and we need to I need to try and do that some. Absolutely, yeah. As we definitely want to, yeah. You definitely want to hear from those old guys too. You know, they're they're successful for a reason, and and uh, they're a wealth of information. So yeah. They're just good to, good to chat with. So. And they're fun. Like it, Absolutely. It, it, it makes me feel better whenever I hear their stories, too. Yeah. They're wrecks. <laughs> I'm not the only one. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. Yeah.